Hello, I'm Mark Enns with the Department of Animal Sciences at Colorado State University. In the previous audiovisual presentation, we talked a little bit about the inbreeding coefficient or the coefficient of inbreeding, depending on which terminology you use and what that might mean and what it represents. In this very brief audiovisual presentation, I want to give you a little bit of a practical application uh, for this. When you're trying to determine uh, maybe what uh, male you're going to mate to which female and to produce the next generation, is that appropriate or not? So I just want to give you an example uh, that will hopefully serve as a bit of a reference. Okay, so we're going to work off those two pedigrees that we used in the previous audiovisual presentation, uh, where we had Sniper's 44 Magnum of THR, and we had uh, 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 Crea Peruvian Epiphany, uh, her pedigree as well. Okay, and so what I want to do is say, what if we use those as examples, say, what if we wanted to mate those two animals? So uh, I'm hoping you could see this. I took their two pedigrees and lined them up. Okay, and so the first thing we do is look at these, and these are the pedigrees of the two animals that would become parents of the next generation if you mated these two. So one of the, the, the practical ways I look at these is say, let's take a look at the grandparents of the potential offspring. So these would be the parents of Peruvian Epiphany and Magnum of THR. Okay, and we'll look at those and see if any of their parents, which would be the grandparents of the potential offspring, are shared in common. Okay, and so if we look at those grandparents and one of the grandparents is the same, so let's say of the potential offspring, the paternal grandsire and the maternal grandsire are the same individual, then that's one grandparent in common. The potential offspring would be 12.5% inbred. Now, this assumes that that grandparent is not inbred itself, because if it is, then it increases the inbreeding level. If you find that two grandparents are in common, so essentially the parents are full sibs, then the inbreeding of the offspring will be 25%. And again, it assumes that those grandparents are not themselves inbred because it would increase the level of inbreeding. Now, by lining the pedigrees up this way, if you find animals that are in common that show up in that top pedigree and the bottom pedigree, and they're further back in the pedigree than these potential grandparents, then that would result in a lower level of inbreeding, given that there is one animal that shows up further back in the pedigree. As you add more animals that show up further back in the pedigree, the inbreeding of this potential offspring, of course, is increased. Now, uh, so hopefully this gives you a bit of a reference to think about the levels of inbreeding. You know, from a, from a personal perspective, I oversee a breeding program for about uh, 400 uh, uh, cows in uh, a research program, and I try to keep uh, inbreeding below 10% because that says in one of those common ancestors back in the pedigree, if the inbreeding is 10%, there's one, uh, 1 in 10 chance that a recessive allele would be expressed in the next generation. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. But I also realize that some of you are more comfortable with inbreeding than others. And so your threshold where you begin to worry or maybe are concerned about the potential for a deleterious recessive uh, to express itself or maybe uh, experience higher levels of inbreeding depression, your threshold for uh, concern might be higher than that. Now, there are some publications when you look at a breed as a whole or a breeding program as a whole that the average inbreeding uh, be 6% or left, less. Now, that is the average of the whole population. In this example, I looked at the inbreeding of a single individual. And so uh, just bear that in mind as you make uh, breeding plans in the future. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an understanding of the practical application when we start to think about how uh, uh, we allocate mates, uh, deciding which male goes with which female and what the potential inbreeding of the offspring uh, might be. 
Now, I'll tell you a good reference is a textbook, Understanding Animal Breeding, uh, by Dr. Richard M. Borden. Uh, it's typically available online, uh, and you can often find used copies for a relatively reasonable amount. So, uh, for further information, I su suggest you uh, look at that textbook, or perhaps, uh, well, I know there are uh, perhaps other good resources on the internet that talk about uh, inbreeding and uh, what this means to animal performance. So have a good day.